Hello. I've had some questions about uh, my sewing machines lately, so I thought I'd do a little video of this one since I'm using it to finish up these pillows. Um, this is a Juki LU563. Um, a industrial leather sewing machine for light to medium weight leather. Um, basically anything that will fit under the foot it'll sew through. It'll fit quarter to three eighths of an inch of thickness under the foot. Um, and it is a walking foot with a needle feed. So that means these two feet move up and down independently of each other. And then the inside foot also moves back and forth and the needle moves back and forth to help pull the leather through. On a non-walking foot sewing machine, there's only one foot and it's stationary. And then the, the feed dogs underneath pull the fabric under a stationary foot. So with this, the feed dogs feed the material. The foot and the needle help to feed the material through. This leather is kind of sticky and doesn't like to slide under the presser feet. So I already have the pillow back ready. An invisible zipper in there. Cut out to the right size. Um, and then the pillow front is ready, also cut out to the right size. Um, almost everything that's sewn is sewn called right side to right side or inside out. And then it's flipped right side out after it's sewn. Um, so this machine has, it's called a knee lift, um, it's a lever that I can push with my leg that lifts up the pressure, presser foot, which is really nice because normally on most home sewing machines, there's a lever in the back that you have to use. So if you want to lift up the foot to get your material under there, you can only have one hand on your material and then you have to use one hand to use the foot. So most industrial machines have either a foot lever or a knee lift, which is so, so nice. might notice right on the back there so I'm pretty close to the edge of the leather and then the fabric sticks out a lot further from the edge um, with fabric you need to have a wider seam allowance fabric sticking out beyond the stitching so that it doesn't just fray or tear apart and leather doesn't really need much of a seam allowance at all so that's why the edge is offset like that.
usually bevel the edges like that on big game hides. Um, since they're thicker, they just look nicer with a beveled edge on the finished pillow instead of trying to do a pointy pillow on a really thick hide. It just doesn't tend to turn right side out very well. Thing that's challenging with these big game hides um, is they're pretty soft and stretchy so they tend to stretch a little bit as I'm sewing the pillow so I have to make sure that the backing is big enough to accommodate any stretching and really try to keep it straight and as flat as I can um, on fur-bearing species, the hides get wet, stretched, and nailed out flat before I even cut the pattern pieces, um, and that kind of takes out any stretch in the hide, um, but with this big game species, I'm not sure if it's because of a little bit of a difference in the tanning, since they're tanned for taxidermy, taxidermy purposes, or if it's just because the hide is so much thicker. Um, they get really stiff after they get wet, and then they don't make a very pretty pillow. So they don't bend and conform once they're stuffed. There we are, back to the beginning again. So, open that zipper all the way. The zipper is, uh, so we have a hole to turn it right side out, and then a hole to stuff the stuffing in. prefer putting in a zipper to having to hand sew the opening closed. Which a lot of people do, hand sew the opening closed and that definitely works. I just prefer to avoid hand sewing when I can. Turned. Let's see the bottom. It's ready to be stuffed, but that invisible zipper. They always take a long time to put in, but it looks so nice after. That's something I just started doing recently. Let's put the invisible zipper offset from the bottom there. I really like it. 